Hey guys, uh, thank you for joining again for this seminar. So when you think about cholesterol, cholesterol is not a metabolic fuel. In other words, it's not like fat or carbs that the human body can burn and use for energy. And when you burn carbohydrates, you create water and carbon dioxide. So basically you're eliminating it. And similarly for fat, uh, Nitrogen is eliminated through a very nice process through the liver, through the kidneys. Okay. Now, um, cholesterol is a four ring structure. So it's, when you look at cholesterol, it has four rings and a side chain. And cholesterol is so important for us that Life cannot happen without cholesterol, and cholesterol is also important in plants. So the plants make something called phytosterol, which is a kind of cholesterol that they use. Humans cannot use phytosterol. If you absorb a lot of phytosterol and incorporate that into the membranes of your cells, you can have a kind of a dysfunction and disease that we will explore a little bit later. So it's important to think, you know, cholesterol is much maligned. It's considered to be a bad molecule. It causes heart disease and you want to get it lower. And people really don't understand what cholesterol does. So let's kind of try to lay out the functions of cholesterol. And here is a list, and I'm going to go through individual components of the list. I just put it up so that people can take a glance at it. But let me go through the individual components. So first is this is a cell membrane. Every cell in our body is covered with a membrane. And the membrane is a layer of a specific kind of fatty acids called phospholipids, which is right here. But the integrity, the fluidity of the membrane, the permeability, that means what gets in inside the cell is precisely regulated by the amount of cholesterol. So this is cholesterol. You can see the four ring structure. And this cholesterol in the cell membrane in every cell of our body gives it the right functionality. Now, there are certain parts of the cell membrane where the cholesterol is very rich, and these are called lipid-rich domains or lipid rafts. And these are particularly important because that is the location where the receptors sit. Now, these are neuroreceptors. These are responsible for brain function. And if you deplete the cholesterol, then these neuroreceptors do not sit in the right orientation and you can have dysfunction, cognitive dysfunction, memory dysfunction. And you see some of this in people who go on a cholesterol reducing medicine, they get cognitive dysfunction. And there is a black box warning on cholesterol medications that say that they can lead to memory and cognitive dysfunction. Now, that is as far as the lipid rafts in the brain. But what about other cells? What about other regular cells like muscle cells, like heart cells? In their uh, membranes, there is a segment called caviole, which is also very cholesterol rich. And these caviole are important because that is where the insulin receptor sits. So the functionality, the function of the insulin receptor is dependent on the orientation that is provided by the cholesterol in the caviole. If you deplete this membrane of the cholesterol, the caviole structure is gone and insulin receptor does not sit in the right orientation. And perhaps that's one of the reasons why statins can cause insulin resistance. Now we keep on with the functions of cholesterol. And one of the functions of cholesterol is to supply raw material to 
make steroid hormones. So this is the adrenal gland. And the adrenal gland, even though it has machinery to make cholesterol, it cannot make enough. So it gets cholesterol from the bloodstream, from the LDL molecule. It takes that cholesterol and through a series of biosynthetic synthetic steps, it makes cortisol, hydrocortisone, which is a stress hormone. The aldosterone regulates uh, salt balance, salt and mineral balance. In addition, the LDL molecule also supplies cholesterol to your testis and to your ovaries because they cannot make enough cholesterol for steroid hormones. And you would be surprised that estrogens and testosterone are cholesterol byproducts. They are made from the same, uh, they're made from the pathway through several enzymatic steps, as you see here. Cholesterol is taken up by these and then converted to testosterone in the testis. Now, we said that cholesterol is not a metabolic fuel. What that means is that you can't burn it. You can't use it for energy. Since you can't burn it and you can't use it for energy, you have to eliminate it. You make it, you use it, you eliminate it. So how is cholesterol eliminated? One of the primary sources, and this is not the only source, I will discuss another very important source later, is cholesterol elimination through the production of bile acids. So nature does not like to waste anything. So excess cholesterol that is there in the liver activates a certain enzyme in the liver called 7-alpha hydroxylase. So it activates an enzyme and converts the cholesterol to bile acids. And these bile acids are important for us to be able to absorb fat, fat-soluble vitamins and cholesterol. And I will get into that a little bit in more detail. Many people don't realize that when the sunlight hits our skin, the cholesterol in the skin, which is 7-dehydrocholesterol, gets converted in the presence of ultraviolet rays to vitamin D. So vitamin D is a cholesterol product. Now, this is a slide that I took a lot of pains to make because conceptually, it's very important to understand cholesterol in a holistic way. And why is it important? Because the reason it's important is because having this knowledge will make you make better lifestyle decisions it'll make you make better decisions with regards to medicines that you are being offered or that you may or may not need to take. So when you look at cholesterol in the human body, you should consider it as cholesterol pools. So there are several different cholesterol pools in the human body. One of them is in the brain. The brain is about 2% of the body, but has 25% of its cholesterol. The brain makes its own cholesterol. The cholesterol that you eat, the brain cannot use because it cannot transfer, it cannot get across the blood brain barrier. And the cholesterol that brain uses, it converts it into a certain compound called 24 dehydrocholesterol that is eliminated through the blood brain barrier, sent to the liver and converted to bile. Now, the liver is a very important organ that makes cholesterol, but it doesn't like to make it because it's an expensive process. You will see very soon how expensive it is for the body to make cholesterol. In my book chapter, I'm mentioning that over 100 molecules of ATP, which is our energy currency, is needed to make one molecule of cholesterol. It'll make it if you don't eat it, but it would like to get it from food. It also takes up cholesterol from the bloodstream. In our bloodstream is typically the cholesterol that people think about, that is the LDL cholesterol or called the bad cholesterol or the HDL cholesterol, which is called the good cholesterol. And as we said, it eliminates excess cholesterol in bile. So then there is a bile pool. 
The bile pool is responsible for eliminating excess cholesterol, for absorbing fat and fat soluble vitamins, but the body does not like to waste it. 95% of bile salts that are made or bile acid that is made is reabsorbed and only about 5% of that is eliminated as a part of the cholesterol elimination. Now, when people think about cholesterol, they're really thinking about the blood pool of cholesterol. The blood pool of cholesterol, and these are the different lipoproteins, the LDL, the VLDL, the HDL, the chylomicrons. All of these carry the same cholesterol. There is no difference in cholesterol between the LDL cholesterol or the HDL cholesterol. Um, these molecules have antioxidant function. They uh, help us defend against bacteria and viruses. They carry energy to the tissues. They carry fat-soluble vitamins. They are responsible. There is finally a tissue pool of cholesterol. Like let's say this tissue pool has cholesterol and you start doing fasting. And when you do fasting, you go through autophagy. In other words, you are removing dead tissue, you are removing dead cells. And in the process, cholesterol from these cells is picked up through a process of reverse cholesterol transport through HDL as well as LDL, through HDL and LDL. And it's taken back to the liver. It should not show taken back to the bile. There's a mistake in here. It's taken back to the liver and um, it's recycled. It's, a, it's, it's either reused or eliminated in bile. So I'm going to go quickly through the next several slides because that's not the goal of my presentation. These are the blood pool of cholesterol molecules, the VLDL molecule, the LDL molecule, the HDL molecule and what regulates them. And they have specific functions that have evolved over millions of years of evolution. So you should not consider them as bad because they have a function. And I needed three slides to show the different functions that these molecules have. And I don't want to go through them in detail, but just tell you, that the blood pool of cholesterol that we usually are worried about is something that has specific functionality. So cholesterol is so important that if you eat no cholesterol, there are probably about 25 to 30 different enzymatic steps. Uh, it's even too numerous to count. And from raw materials like acetyl-CoA, you start making cholesterol through different steps. So the first step um, out here, which is the production of mevalonic acid, this is where the statins block the cholesterol production. They block it very high up. And as cholesterol is being made, it makes certain compounds. These are called isoprenoids. These isoprenoids make CoQ10. CoQ10 is important for muscle function. And as cholesterol is being produced, um, Dr. Block got Nobel Prize for defining the pathway of cholesterol production. And there are two different pathways in the human body, the Block pathway and the Candish russell pathway. So in other words, this is a very important synthetic pathway in the human body. And there is some interaction between them. But the final product is cholesterol. And through the candach russell pathway, you have, you have an intermediate, which is the 7-dehydrocholesterol, which when made in the skin, in the presence of ultraviolet light, gets converted to vitamin D. And we said cholesterol is eliminated as bile acids. You also form steroid hormones. One of the byproducts of cholesterol is oxysterols, which also gets converted to bile acids. 
So this is a bird's eye view of the number of different enzymes that are involved in making cholesterol in any cell in the body. This one happens to be the liver. So you can see how important it is. And the only reason I put this slide up is for you to understand that this molecule is crucial and vital for life and should not be maligned like we tend to do when we think about it. Now, humans on a per kilogram basis make less cholesterol than other animals. I was a little surprised about that. The mouse makes a lot more cholesterol than humans do per kilogram. The contribution of liver to the total production of cholesterol is much lower in humans than compared to smaller animals like mouse. The production of cholesterol is, is something that peaks in the early morning hours. In other words, you don't make the same amount of cholesterol through the day. It actually goes down in the evening and then it peaks during the early morning hours. Now, my whole goal of this talk was to tell you that cholesterol synthesis, the amount of cholesterol that our body needs is precisely regulated. There are many, many mechanisms. So cholesterol is a waxy, fatty substance. And because it's waxy and fatty, it cannot live in a watery environment. So it is confined to membranes. Like this is a membrane. This is an internal membrane of the cell, which is called the ER or the endoplasmic reticulum. And cholesterol is present in here. Now, if the amount of cholesterol in the membrane goes down, this is the endoplasmic reticulum, there are sensors in the endoplasmic reticulum, and these are called SREBP. So you don't need to really know the name, but basically this sensor gets activated. When low cholesterol is there, this sensor gets activated. It goes and tells the brain of the cell, which is the nucleus, hey, I need more cholesterol. So the cell starts making a lot of machinery. So enzymes to make cholesterol as well as the LDL receptor. So as the enzymes go up, the synthesis of cholesterol goes up. As the LDL receptor goes up, you pick up more cholesterol from the bloodstream through the LDL. So low cholesterol in the membrane of the cell is a signal for this molecule to go to the liver and jack up the machinery to make cholesterol. Now, what you see out here is another set of machinery that can be activated by the brain of the cell or the nucleus to make bile acids. But since cholesterol is less, the synthesis of bile acid, which is exporting cholesterol, goes down. We will talk about these structures in the next slide. Actually, the following slide. So this is an elegant study. I want you to think about this for a little while because these are liver cells that are grown in a medium that is very cholesterol rich. Since there is a lot of cholesterol, the liver cells, the signals to make cholesterol remains in the cytoplasm of the cell. This is the nucleus, this is the cytoplasm. So in other words, the cell is not getting any signals to activate the cholesterol machinery, manufacturing machinery. All the signals to make cholesterol are inactive and in the cytoplasm because it's getting all the cholesterol it needs from the outside, from the serum, which is what the liver prefers to do. Now, if you make the cells a vegan, in other words, you just completely remove cholesterol from the serum, you can see that all the cholesterol manufacturing machinery is activated because the signal to activate that completely moves to the nucleus of the cell and is absent from the cytoplasm. So, when you deplete cholesterol, you will tell the liver, jack up the cholesterol making machinery, I need more cholesterol. 
what if there is too much cholesterol in the cell membrane? So here is a situation in which the internal membrane has too much cholesterol. So this signal remains inactive, but another signal becomes active, which is called the liver X receptor. The liver X receptor, um, I, I made a mistake here, I'm gonna correct that, but the liver X receptor comes here, it activates a certain set of machinery that spits out the cholesterol from the liver cells. So that's called cholesterol efflux. So there is this machinery called the ABC cassette. Um, and this cassette extrudes or effluxes the cholesterol from the liver cell. It gives it to a waiting HDL. This is a nascent HDL molecule that is cholesterol poor. The cholesterol is picked up and the HDL molecule increases in size. In addition, the excess cholesterol activates something called FXR. This is not LXR, but it's called farsenoid. The farsenoid receptor, it gets a little suppressed. It goes down. When it goes down, the bile acid manufacturing machinery goes up and the liver cell starts putting out bile salts through bile salt export pump. So in other words, as the cholesterol in the cell is going up, there are mechanisms designed to eliminate cholesterol into the bloodstream and also eliminate it from the body through bile salt production. Now, bile salts, I thought, was just a simple way of eliminating cholesterol, but it is very important. There are about maybe 15 or more different steps through which the liver converts cholesterol to bile salts. It's amazing. And these steps are under regulatory control. How much bile salts you need depends on the amount of cholesterol and cholesterol breakdown products like oxysterols that are present. So we don't need to look at this slide in exquisite detail, but just to know that it's a finely regulated mechanism to make bile salts. So many people dismiss bile salts, they don't understand them, but it is very important to understand them for cholesterol homeostasis. In other words, how does our body regulate cholesterol? When there is high cholesterol or cholesterol end products like oxysterols, an enzyme in the liver is activated that makes bile salts, which are released into the gallbladder. And when you eat a fatty meal, these bile salts are then released into the duodenum or the intestine. And they help absorption of fat, fat soluble vitamins. But 95% of the bile salts are absorbed at the end of the small intestine is called the ileum. This process is called enterohepatic circulation. And we will look at that in a little bit more detail. But here is what bile salts do. They are detergents. They form micelles. So this is a fat globule. And this fat globule cannot be absorbed because it is waxy and fatty. It doesn't dissolve in water. Here is a bile acid. It's got a hydrophilic, a water-soluble area, and a hydrophobic, a water-insoluble area. So it will form a micelle. So the outer covering of this micelle is water-soluble, and that permits this fat globule to interact with our intestine and get absorbed. And this process is not only important for fat, but it's also important for fat-soluble vitamins like A, D, and E, and also important for cholesterol. So we have a bile acid pool of about three grams. They have that det detergent action. They're releasing the bile in response to food. 95% of the bile is reabsorbed. If the bile acid pool increases in size, then this bile acid pool will inactivate its own production through a feedback mechanism. 
if there is increase in cholesterol in our body, the cholesterol will also inactivate its own production through a feedback mechanism. So there is homeostatic regulation. One of the biggest mistakes people think is that having a high LDL level means that your liver is making more cholesterol. It's exactly the opposite. A high LDL level is mostly a situation in which the liver has down-regulated the production of cholesterol. And in order to achieve cholesterol balance, it may be eliminating more cholesterol. On a daily basis in a human, about 500 milligrams of cholesterol are eliminated along with bile. So in other words, as bile salts are being made, the liver not only, not only eliminates bile salts, but it eliminates cholesterol with it. Part of that is reabsorbed, or most of it is reabsorbed. And the amount that is eliminated is about a gram. So the body is then asked to make approximately a gram of cholesterol on a daily basis. 500 milligrams of it is lost in feces. Another 500 milligrams is then used to replenish the bile acid pool. Now, this is a little snapshot from the chapter that I'm writing. It's amazing to find out that cholesterol is not just eliminated through bile, but cholesterol can be directly eliminated from the intestine through a process called TICE, transintestinal cholesterol elimination. And you don't need to read what I have written. I'm just kind of uh, promoting my book chapter. But um, here it says that it's an important source. About 35% of body's cholesterol is eliminated this way. It is inducible. In other words, if the liver for some reason is not able to eliminate cholesterol and bile, then the intestine increase, the TICE, elimination. This is finally regulated by the body's pool of cholesterol through sensors that tell it, hey, jack up the elimination or jack down the elimination. These mechanisms are still not clearly understood as to what is the process that makes the intestine eliminate cholesterol. So coming back here, I want to focus for a minute again that when you conceptualize cholesterol, you should conceptualize it in different pools. There's a tissue pool in muscles, heart, uh, the pancreas, uh, other organs of the body. There is a brain pool, which is the big, one of the biggest pool per uh, gram of tissue. Uh, there is a liver pool. There is a bile pool that is important for cholesterol elimination and absorption of fat. And what most people are familiar with is the blood pool, which is basically lipoproteins. That is the LDL called the bad cholesterol. I prefer to call it the good cholesterol also, or the other good cholesterol. The HDL, the chylomicrons is the cholesterol that is absorbed from food. This blood pool has several functions that we have talked about in different uh, uh, talks. The brain is eliminating cholesterol through the blood-brain barrier through an intermediate, which then takes up by the liver and then converted to bile. Now, which brings us appropriately to how does the body regulate the absorption of cholesterol? How does it know how much it needs? It knows how much it needs through feedback mechanisms. So here is an intestinal cell, it's called an enterocyte. There are specific receptors. In other words, there are, there are specialized structures that absorb cholesterol. These are called neiman pick like receptor. And it not only takes in cholesterol, but it also takes in plant cholesterol or phytosterols. But it does not want to take in phytosterols. Phytosterols are not good for us, as you will see in a little bit. And as soon as it takes a phytosterol, it has an active mechanism of spitting out the phytosterol. It can spit out the amount, some cholesterol too, but principally this mechanism is designed to spit out the phytosterol. 
the amount of cholesterol that is needed is then absorbed, converted, or esterified, and then put into chylomicrons and sent to the bloodstream. And the absorption of cholesterol is aided by the production of bile. And when you look at certain studies, and by the way, the amount of data on the amount of cholesterol that is absorbed in food is very sparse. It is not precise. Uh, the absorption of cholesterol, the exact absorption of cholesterol is difficult to determine. But in this particular study, about 26% of what you eat gets absorbed. So roughly about 65 milligrams per day, it's far lower than what I would have expected. Now, if you take the same person and you put them on a statin, so in other words, you jack up the, or you reduce the production of cholesterol by the use of a high dose of statin, what happens to cholesterol absorption? So let's come back to the slide in a second, but let's look at it in more detail as to what a statin does. So this is an individual on a statin. This is the membrane that has the cholesterol. This is called the endoplasmic reticulum. Now, what the statin does is that it blocks the cholesterol manufacturing machinery. It, it blocks the HMG CoA reductase. So the cell, the liver cell cannot make cholesterol. When it cannot make cholesterol, the machinery that is responsible for making cholesterol gets activated. So in other words, this SREBP gets activated, moves to the nucleus. Let's see if it moves to the nucleus, it got, does. So once it moves to the nucleus, since it can jack this up, but this is blocked by the statin, it jacks up the production of LDL receptors. So it says, hey, I am hungry. I'm going to take more cholesterol from the bloodstream. So it picks up cholesterol from the LDL. And that's the reason why when you take a statin, that there is a 30 to 50% reduction in cholesterol from the bloodstream. And you would think that that's a great thing, and perhaps it is, and that's a matter for another discussion, another talk. But let's go back in here. So this is before taking a statin. The amount of cholesterol absorption is 26%, but now you started taking a large amount of statin. Look, what happened to cholesterol absorption? It went up to 53%. There was a 100% increase in the absorption of cholesterol. Why is this the case? That's because of homeostatic mechanisms. The body is telling you, hey, I can't make any cholesterol. I'm desperate for cholesterol, so I'm going to absorb more of the cholesterol that you're eating in food. The amount absorbed went up by 200% nearly, from 65 milligrams per day to 153 milligrams per day. We went through the slide. Now, if that were all, I would be okay. But let's talk about what is happening to the absorption of plant cholesterol. So this camposterol and cytosterol are plant cholesterols. This is at baseline, the amount in different lipoproteins. But when you take the total amount, it went up from 443 to 715. That means more of the plant's sterol is being absorbed and put into our lipoproteins and into our cell membranes. And plant cholesterol went up dramatically by approximately 60% in the bloodstream. Is there a danger to absorbing plant cholesterol? So the answer to that in statins is not known because it's not explored. But there is a genetic disorder in which we absorb too much of the plant's cholesterol because we don't have mechanisms to spit it out. And like we said, phytosterols of plant cholesterol is very different. It doesn't want to be in our cell membranes because it doesn't function well. Our cells don't function well. So this is a 17-year-old with cytosterolemia who had a buildup of a plaque ending up with a heart attack. And these are blood cells for another, from another group of patients with cytosterolemia in whom the blood cells are fragile because the cell membrane 
when it is replacing cholesterol for phytosterol, the cell membrane does not have the appropriate fluidity and it can break up and have a fragility that leads it to premature damage. So I wanted to stop here and then for the next 20 minutes, let's see if there are questions. But in the next session, when we do, we are going to explore how is body's cholesterol regulated when you go through fasting? So when you're doing fasting, what does the liver do? Does it drop the production of cholesterol? So in other words, what happens to the liver pool? What happens to the brain pool? What happens to the blood pool of cholesterol? When you're fasting, does the blood pool go up or does it go down? Does the liver pool go down? Does the liver start making less? What happens to the brain pool? The next situation to explore would be a person on a standard American diet. When you're on a standard American diet, is the liver manufacturing machinery to make cholesterol jacked up or jacked down? What happens to the blood levels of the lipoproteins? Does the LDL go up? What happens to the VLDL, which is a triglyceride-rich lipoprotein? What happens to the HDL, which is considered to be the good cholesterol? What happens to the brain pool of cholesterol? And then finally, we can explore somebody on a low-carb diet and take it to the extreme of somebody on an animal-sourced food diet, which means they're eating a lot of cholesterol because cholesterol is an animal uh, product and it's found in animal food. So if you take somebody who's a carnivore, they're taking in a lot of cholesterol, even though the percent absorption of cholesterol is less, they're absorbing more in terms of absolute amount. What happens to the liver production? What happens to the blood pool of cholesterol? What happens to the brain pool of cholesterol? So it's important for us to understand how cholesterol is regulated in the human body. And when we understand how it is regulated in the human body, how it is eliminated, how much of it is absorbed, how much of that is synthesized, we can make better lifestyle decisions. I hope it was fun for you. And I look forward to seeing you in the next session. Thank you.